welcome to the Grand Teton Music Festival's Backstage Pass. Our weekly invitation to everyone who loves and supports the festival to connect. Musicians to musicians, musicians with our friends and supporters in the audience, and to welcome anyone who's drawn to be a part of the GTMF community. I am your co-host, Eva Capaletti Chow. I'm a violinist with the GTMF Orchestra for almost 20 years. And I'm so lucky to be creating this program with my friend and your other co-host, Jerry. My name is Jerry Ho. I'm the associate conductor for the Grand Teton Music Festival. And it's a pleasure to be here and helping us with his good humor, patience, and dedication in all things technical is Mike Richards. Thank you so much for everything, Mike. So without any uh, further ado. I am so excited for this particular um, uh, session, I guess, invitation to be here gathering. And this one's a special one because we are spending the show honoring and celebrating a pretty special event. In fact, I'm really wondering if anybody else has hit it. Marsha Peck, who's a cellist um, in the GTMF Orchestra, this would have been her 50th year coming to the orchestra. I am really excited to ask her what it was like back then. I mean, she said her first year here was 1967. Crazy times. Absolutely. It was a very tumultuous time as we are in tumultuous times right now. I was just thinking, I was looking at what was going on in 1967 and just to clue everybody in, the Vietnam War was in full swing. Uh, we were on the prelude. There was a big pandemic in 1968, 1969, so very similar to our times now. The civil rights movement was going on. Um, Martin Luther King and Robert F. Kennedy were unfortunately assassinated the next year. Um, 1967, Jimi Hendrix uh, released his debut album, and Woodstock was very much on the horizon. So uh, very exciting, tumultuous, crazy times as we are living in right now. This is where I'd love to invite Marsha Peck and some of the guests that she wanted to have with her so we can talk about this. So we were just talking about the crazy times. Welcome everybody, the crazy times. And Marsha, I would love to, when, when I think about 50 years ago and you as this young woman, you were still a student, right, at that point? I was a student. Let me just say, I hope anybody listening isn't any good at math. <laughs> yes, I was. I had just started at Curtis. Um, yeah, I was, and I had never been west before. Uh, so, and Jackson was just a little cow town. You couldn't buy a bottle of soy sauce or a uh, a special coffee. It was it was not the 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 luxurious place with all the amenities it has now. Right. And what was it like when you're pulling in, I'm trying to imagine for myself, when you're pulling into uh, Teton Village, what was actually there at that point? Yes, the concerts were in town and most of us stayed in town then. Um, and Teton Village consisted only of uh, the Alpenhof, the Sojourner, which is now the something else, <laughs> and, and the Tram Tower. There were only three buildings in Teton Village. Wow. Uh, the next year, the Mangy Moose was built, and then we had uh, chamber music concerts there. They were called watermelon concerts, and mm -hmm. people from town brought watermelons, and, uh, uh, and the it, it was very informal chamber music. That sounds awesome. Where in the Mangy Moose were the concerts? Right on that main dining room level. So you were playing concerts with, like, a stuffed moose over your head? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing an image here. Thank you very much, Mike, our tech guru. Wow. So who created the idea of the watermelon concerts? Do you know, Marsha? You know, I don't remember. I, I'm imagining it must have been Ling, but uh, I don't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, it, and the musicians, of course, because everyone put together their own groups. So tell me about that. What was the feel? What was happening? I, I, get, get us like sort of in the mindset of late 60s, early 70s doing this as a young person. Was it a mostly young orchestra? Was it a full orchestra? It was a small orchestra that uh, at the beginning. Uh, the, um, 
1967 was the sixth year of the festival. And until then, it had all been a local festival with local musicians. Wow. And that was the first year that uh, the, the um, local festival had decided to invite musicians from other places. And uh, I think there were only three cellos, uh, so it was a small orchestra. It had the same, it had the same aspirations and values that uh, that the festival has grown into all these years since. Um, and right from the beginning, there was a special bond between the festival and the community, probably because of its roots in the community musicians. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. When we were first talking about how to celebrate this amazing <laughs> um, anniversary. You mentioned somebody named Zadie. Yes, Zadie. Uh, Was she part of the original um, connection with the people that were living in Jackson Hole? Yes, her mother was one of the, uh, her mother, um, was one of the uh, original settlers in, in, or, you know, she had a long history in Jackson. Zadie Heide Cooper Fuller is a cellist who's brought um, music to the schools very passionately and uh, devotedly. And I didn't do a great job introducing anyone. So <laughs> let's start off with the Mulcahy's and please introduce yourselves a little bit. Say when you joined uh, GTMF and where you are now, and then, then we'll go from there. Uh, hi everyone. Hi Marsha. Congratulations. We moved to the United States in 1990 uh, at the time that I joined the Chicago Symphony and we we figured out very quickly that America had these amazing national parks so already before we had any connection with Jackson and the festival in our first summers of 90 and 91 we went west on family vacations. And we actually came incredibly close to the festival. Uh, Without knowing it was there. We didn't know about the festival. And we, 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 but we stayed in the park, we got accommodation in the park. So we never actually came as far as Jackson. But that happened a couple of years in a row. And then I got the incredible opportunity, it was 1992, that I got the invitation to join the festival orchestra. And it was a very fortuitous thing. It, I was known somewhat through uh, the long-time trumpeters, Charlie Guy and Barbara Butler, we played in an early music group in Chicago. And that's, that was my, my ticket Excellent. into there. So we couldn't believe how lucky we were because we love it out west so much that suddenly we could come out and try this festival out. And of course, they were trying me out. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I remember the first year was a was a big trombone year. It was um, the Shostakovich 15th Symphony, which has a big trombone solo in it, and it, also the Ravel Bolero, which has a famous solo for the trombone. Mm -hmm. So it was a good year to test me out, and of course we loved it, uh, and we've gotten to stay there. So here we are, almost 30 years later, and uh, I think I think this year would have been this year would have been your 29th and yeah. my 27th. Yeah. I was going to say, Gabby, when did you join in then? So it sounds like... Yeah, yeah. two years that he just played. And then the following year, um, <coughs> Dale couldn't be there. And uh, Dave Griffin, who's one of the horns in the CSO, he wasn't at the time, but he was out there and um, he needed an, an assistant. And so they asked me if I would do it. And I've been playing ever since. It's kept us out of the nut house for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is the greatest collection of people. It's the most fun, fun group of people. And, and uh, Marsha and her husband, Dave, were among our very first, if not our first friends there. We didn't know them at all, but we made friends very fast. And, there. and their daughter, Hadley, became very good friends with our kids too. Yeah. And we've, yeah. you know, we spent a lot of time with one another. We're very close to them and explored the backpacking in the backcountry with them. Just, yep. just magic. They taught us how to backpack. Yep. Oh, <laughs> for a number of years, we would, at the end of the festival, after the last concert, we would go with the, uh, Mick and Gabby and Pado and Lori, Lauren uh, with Hadley and spend a week doing the Teton Crest Trail. And uh, uh, I think Winds. we went to the Winds one year. Uh, we had just amazing experiences. 
Hadley mm -hmm. started hiking when she was six, and I think you were, uh, Pat, your children were about the same age. Um, I think the first time Lauren did, we did just the, the um, Cascade paintbrush. Luke, Lauren was eight. Mm -hmm. oh. did it, And uh, I remember her saying, well, can I bring Teddy and can I bring Dolly? And I said, you can bring anything you can carry. And she <laughs> quickly decided a pack of cards was enough. <laughs> And you taught us such wonderful things as, as bringing a can of smoked oysters and eating it every time you cross a mountain pass. <laughs> we still do that. And hot well, sauce makes anything edible. Yeah. Well, it, it, Gabby, you taught us to get up early and hike before it got hot, too hot. So, Ralph, when were you first coming to the festival? Because I'm hearing the Mulcahy's came, you said 32 and 28 or something like that, or 30? This would have been your 30... 29th and 27th. So okay. we came in 1992. What about for you, Ralph? When did you... Uh, some, somewhere in the 20s, and I'm, I'm always off a year when I try to calculate it. I, my first year was 1996, um, and it was very nice for me. It, it gave me a chance to meet and work with Ling Tung and connect with that bit of festival history. How had you found out about it? Uh, a lot of friends who played uh, and and loved it, and you know, I made it known that I would love an invitation if uh, an opening came up, and it did. Mm -hmm. And where were you at that point, Ralph? Where were you? Uh, play. I I was concertmaster of the Utah Symphony. Ralph and I first met in uh, Minneapolis. He was he was uh, in our orchestra here. Ah. In uh, 1975. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we did tons of chamber music together. I remember really mm -hmm. memorable times with with Ralph leading me through the Kodai duo or something. <laughs> <laughs> <It was really laughs> hard. I, I remember, Marsha, I remember your beautiful playing. What, what a treat to have that in my life. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> Jerry, I am seeing so many comments go flying by. Can we take a pause here so that they can hear some of what's being said? Absolutely. Marsha, there's a lot of friends out there, a lot of fellow musicians who are, who are so thrilled to be celebrating this day with you. Um, I was, shout out just a few names, Talia, Susan, wow. Steve Laven, Sarah Schwartz, Nancy Goodall, Michael, Gast, um, Lois Finkel is here, uh, Chris Desby is here, John Kenzie, um, Camille Churchfield, Barbara Scowcroft, and um, wonderful supporter Barbara Hertz is here, and they're all saying congratulations to you on this amazing milestone. They're looking forward to your stories. They're looking forward to seeing you next time, um, 2021. I know we're all counting the days until then. I miss everyone so much. I can't wait to see you again. I, I've been so nervous for this, for meeting, you know, for this Zoom meeting, for this celebration, but um, I just have missed you all so much. I've also been really looking forward to it. It's going to be so great afterwards when we're all allowed to be up on the screen. So it's so good to see your faces now, too. That hits me every single week how good it is to see these people that I only see in the summers and I have a special affinity for that, you know, because of the tight knit feeling of, of GTMF. So congratulations from Peter Benalil and Willow oh. Carey. Steve Laven says, Congrats, Marsha. What a legacy. Carla Ekdahl says, please tell Marsha that Carla and Peter wish her well and are so amazed by your talent and your friendship. So as part of this celebration, I would love to invite Zeta and Taro Suzuki to talk with you. I know that they've been friends of yours and a huge part of the GTMF community. Zeta, I understand you have a question for Marsha. Yes, I, as I was listening to her when she first came, I recalled something that I hadn't thought about in 50 some years. And we were in the Quebec uh, area, Taro was concertmaster of the Quebec Symphony and our principal horn player, his name was Tom Kenny. And I believe he has passed, but I think he was the um, 
manager of the GTMF, he, he was at least one of the uh, musicians that booked other musicians to go. And he asked us to go, Tara and me, but um, we were busy playing in Japan and we went to Cuba uh, in 1965 and to Japan in 1964 and 66. And then in 1967, we thought we might go, but then we had twins and we weren't sure we would have accommodations for the little twins. And I was just wondering if Marcia knew Tom Kenny or if he was the one that asked her to come to the festival because this was before Ling Tong came. Mm. Yes, I, I actually preceded Ling, I think by two weeks. <laughs> he came that, that first summer as a guest conductor. Um, uh -huh. I'm always uh, astonished at people who can remember things. I, um, there are people in our orchestra who say, oh, remember when we played that uh, Schub Schubert second in 1989 with so and so and as it's I, I never remember those things but uh, I do remember Tom Kenny uh, in some um, that he had a lot to do with the early festival yeah. I remember best of all I remember you and Taro because uh, you were just the heart and soul of the festival for a long time the chamber music you did was just breathtaking and those concerts I do remember <laughs> I, were, I thought you were mentors to me about chamber music I learned I learned so much from you and I'm so grateful for the times we played together oh so are we Marcia we we just think you are the greatest the greatest person to play with whether it's in the orchestra or whether it's chamber music you have such a wonderful influence so warm, so musical, and so stabilizing. And um, I remember when I first met you, and uh, of course we had the fact that we had gone to Curtis, both of us, but you came much later because you're much younger than we are. Right. And, and then also you had an attachment to New England, and we had this cottage in Maine, and um, so we always talked about that. And then we played together. I remember playing with you from the very first time. I think it was uh, the Brahms C minor piano quartet and it was with Janet Ruggeri uh, yeah. playing the viola. And then we played, we always waited until you got to the festival, which was towards the end. And, and then we would play quintets. <laughs> I was looking at the, some of the music that uh, uh, we had played. Uh, yesterday, matter of fact, and uh, every uh, 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 the piano score at the beginning of it, the Zeta had had written with whom they played and what date, and all these piano quintets, string sextets, your name appears, <laughs> uh, one one way or the other, Masha. <laughs> yeah, my first year was seventy three, and since then. Uh, I think we have played tons of chamber music. At that time, you know, uh, the festival was uh, geared for the musicians, not so much for the critics and all these things. So there were a lot of experimentation by musicians, which uh, gave us a freedom to play uh, things that they wanted to play always, but never had the chance, or they had played before, but they have millions of new ideas. And uh, we were able to do this. That's where I learned an um, immense amount of uh, uh, music and about people. And uh, it was, was such a wonderful period that uh, I was very fortunate to be uh, in the Tetons almost all the, I'm sure, the hiking trails you have done. And uh, I remember one uh, in particular when we went with you and David and perhaps a couple others uh, to go to one of the caves. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and this was just before you had Hadley. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, I remember getting... In, you know, crawling in and out of the cave 
it was a <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, the real experience, and we all all <laughs> cheer, cheer, and help pulling you that's and right. pushing you. She was you. born in uh, the next October. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's right. So that was very memorable experience. Yes. yes, and then when we were inside, it was very dark. It was beautiful, but it was very dark, and we all sang songs from our childhood. And you had a dog with you. I think his name was Shadow, mm -hmm. and. To this day, I associate you with saying, good dog, Shadow. You loved your dog so much. And um, well, it was just incredible that you were so very pregnant and you got in that cage and out. <laughs> Congratulations, Marcia. It's amazing and wonderful that you have been there for 50 years. That's incredibly oh, that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you for having us be here with you of oh. remembering us because we always love you and remember you oh thank you so much Zayla. thank you taro great yeah. pleasure fantastic stories and that leads me a little bit because they've now mentioned roger ruggeri and the climbing of the grand and your story is particularly amazing. Would you be willing to to tell us what happened what when when you climbed the grand and some of the details it w It was one of those early years um, It was toward the end of the summer. I think it was our last weekend, and a lot of the guide guide uh, guides were closing down for the for the summer. Um, but we went with, I won't say the guide company, uh, they, they were a little shorthanded, so they asked a friend of theirs uh, if they would take Roger and me up the Grand. Um, and this friend was a wonderful, an expert mountaineer, but he didn't know the route, hadn't been up the route. But they said, no problem, you can just follow, there'll be a group ahead of you, you can just follow them. Well, the group ahead of us quickly got out of sight and uh, we quickly got off route. And so instead of making the summit at about noon, which is the, the prerequisite. Time to do it, yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, we summited around six in the evening. Um, and then would, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that because of the storms that come in and there's so much electricity up there. Um, but our guide was very steady and, and uh, we uh, started our descent and you had to get to the rappel, that long 120 foot rappel to the upper saddle before dark. That was his goal um, so that he could set, the, set up the rappel. And we um, got there just before dark. We had one flashlight um, between us. And Roger was this, the, st the better climber, of, obviously, of the two of us. So he would go down first with the one flashlight in his teeth. And then I would go down. And then our guide, uh, Carlos, uh, descended and then and then we finally made it i don't know around midnight to the upper to the lower saddle where uh this guide who we were supposed to be following had cached some snacks and some water and things like that but we couldn't find it in the dark so then we just kept on going and we uh finally i don't know about 3 a.m we found a little trickle of water coming down from a a, a slab of rock and um so anyway we made it back to lupin meadows by about 8 a.m i think we climbed down through the night i mean hiked down through the night part of what took us so long was that because it was dark our guide had to we had to rope up a lot more than other normal groups who are doing it in the daytime in good weather. So we walked into the Tuesday morning rehearsal at about uh, an hour late. Um, and of course we had no phones to let people know where we'd been uh, or what had happened, but there we were. Roger also, I would say, was the heart and soul of the festival back then. And um, you know, th there are a couple people that we just always think of and 
even though they're no longer with us. Um, Janet Ruggeri was just a, a dear friend and a person that absolutely everyone loved. And uh, I, mean, I was watching uh, Michael Mukehi over here just like, no way. <laughs> did, you, did you also climb the Grand? No, no, it's not my no. thing. No, no, not at all. But it's a, it, it's a, that is incredible. I've, I, I have read a lot of climbing books and I've read a lot of disasters. And that's one of the most dangerous things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> And you're so calm about it. Yeah, we just climbed through the night. No water, no food, no, you know, just rope with. Our feet were wow. swollen twice their size by the time we got down. Okay, so you get like extra credit points, not only for the 50 <laughs> years, but for the willingness to, with your swollen feet to go straight into rehearsal. That's like above and beyond the show. I must think we want. got demerits, actually. <laughs> Ralph, are you a hiker when you're in the Tetons? Uh, a little bit. Uh, compared to my wife, uh, I would say not at all. <laughs> but yeah. but I, I enjoy the, the walks and hikes that I've taken. I'm thinking you and I would do like the String Lake Loop very nicely together. <laughs> yes. That's kind of my, my taste as well. <laughs> One of the things that was said throughout and was um, about the spirit of the musicians all the way through. The Mulcahy's mentioned it um, as well as uh, Zeta and Taro. There's like a spirit that happens of camaraderie that even if I don't know, if I haven't met somebody because we've not overlapped in time, there's the same feeling throughout all seven weeks, no matter when I've joined. And you said a quote to me when we were in communication about this, Marsha, that I wanna read back. She said, the festival hasn't been about making music so much as it has been about allowing it to emerge from a shared ethos. Mm. And I love that. So in honor of your 50 years of embodying that ethos and open heartedly inviting those of us who've come later into it through your kindness and through your invitations to take hikes and to be in nature as Zeta was talking about as well. It's my experience of you. We would like to play a piece for you, have it played for a little while, and I hope you enjoy it. You told me recently that this piece was one of the most memorable performances of your life. It is the Beethoven Violin Concerto, played by James Ennis a couple of years ago, and I've chosen just a clip of it for us to enjoy with you, Marcia, as some of the beauty that we all get to create. Ralph, Gabby, Mick, Zeta, Taro, and all of us who are lucky enough, Jerry, to be a part of the music making of GTMF. <laughs>
Oh. And we know where that goes. <laughs> Perfection, isn't it? <laughs> so good. Any last thoughts any of us would that you'd like to offer each other or to the community that's listening to us? Any last thoughts? I would just say that the for for me the festival has been the the it has felt like the still point of my turning life around it and that every summer to be able to return there felt like a, a time to uh, I, when I could renew my musical vows. It's meant that much to me. Thank you, Eva, for thinking of this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ralph and Mick and Gabby and Zeta and Taro for helping me celebrate. Before we wrap up here, I just wanted to give voice to all your fans out in the audience. And there are so many messages. And, and your sister, uh, Diana, says, congratulations to my sister, Marsha. She was the sister who practiced. <laughs> <laughs> your friends, Sive and Joe, are watching from Dublin. And they're sending their love to you. And she, they say that you are at the absolute best. David Shep says, hi, Marsha, congratulations. Talia sent her congratulations, but she also wanted to add that Carla Maria sends her congratulations and a lot of love to you. Martha Van Genderen, uh, she says that, I remember your playing with the orchestra in the old high school in town. And one evening as a soloist, which was awesome, uh, we were so impressed. Of course, We've loved hearing you and the connection with family over the years. Congratulations and best wishes in the coming years. Blessings to you. Roger is, is, is there in the audience and he says, congratulations to you, Marsha, from another old timer. And Squeak says, I was in the first group that went up the Grand with Marsha and Roger. We summited around one and lost track of Marsha's group. Congratulations to you, Marsha, on a long and amazing career. So there's a lot of people who are here to celebrate you, who love you, and are grateful for all that you have brought to the festival and you epitomize what we strive for as musicians, as humans, and we are so grateful for you, Marsha. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mick. Thank you, Gabby, so much for joining us. And thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Zeta. Thank you, Taro. And of course, the party is not over yet because there's no no performance at GTMF without a drink at the spur that comes afterwards. Gabby, I have your martini ready, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I have a pint for you. Uh, all of you will be able to join us on screen and have a chance to send your wishes to Marsha and chat with each other and see each other. And so thank you so much for a wonderful show to celebrate Marsha's 50th anniversary with the Grand Teton Music Festival. Bravo. Yay!